Co. Hey there. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you're new around here, my name is Dee, and here's my channel, where Session Diaries, where I share my experience as a mid-20-something girl living in a big city, a young professional experiencing and going through the ups and downs of economy and, frankly, whatever life throws at me. I really wanted to talk about uh, books. I work at an integrated marketing agency and despite my particular area of expertise being digital marketing and readable media, there are many other teams and their respective thought leaders. It's a huge network. Picture this. One day, I just decide to reach out to senior leadership people at my agency. What books have had a game-changing impact on their careers? What books have helped them to get where they are today? Um, and I've got quite, quite interesting results. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Seven books five categories in no particular order in terms of value, but more of just, um, you know, just how I felt. <laughs> Here we go. Account management slash client services. The book is called The Art of Client Services. Uh, the classic guide updated for today's marketers and advertisers. Written by Robert Solomon. And the third edition is also uh, has a foreword from Ian Schaffer, I think. Please, please don't hate me if I pronounce it incorrectly, but I think that's Schaffer. So the book is published in 2016 uh, originally, but uh, since then they updated the book. So now they have a third edition, I believe, published in 2021, recommended to me by a client partner. And then I talked to some people from uh, client services and account management teams. And uh, whenever anyone new joins the team, they're asked to read the uh, art of client services. And it's not just a general recommendation. Usually a manager uh, of that person would actually check in if they actually read the book. And then like, you know, they usually have different cohorts of like uh, joining those client services slash account management teams. And they do those group studies where they discuss the book, reflect on how um, the business is being conducted right now and what we as a company and they as a team can improve um, and what tips and tricks from that book we can implement. I think it's cute. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's appropriate to say that. Oops, sorry. Second category would be communications. I hope you would recognize the author. It's Malcolm Gladwell. He's like one of the global top thinkers uh, based on times. He's one of the New York Times bestseller author. If you haven't heard of The Tipping Point, it's probably because now he has so many popular books, but The Tipping Point was actually written in the year 2000, so it's been quite a long time. Um, maybe that's why. He wrote like Blink, The Outliers, Talking to Strangers. In fact, Talking to Strangers I have like right here. Um, I have the book. I really enjoyed it. I'm actually fond of Malcolm Gladwell. The tipping point is that magic moment when an idea, trend, or social behavior crosses a threshold, tips, and spreads like wildfire. Just as a single sick person can start an epidemic of the flu, so too can a small but precisely targeted push cause a fashion trend, the popularity of a new product, or a drop in the crime rate. I'm really curious to see what Mr. Gladwell uh, had <laughs> in the year 2000 and how it's different from, you know, his uh, fascist books. So, you know, I'll let you know how it goes. Leadership. Again, in no particular order. I'm gonna dive right in with the first book by Brené Brown, Dare to Lead. And I actually have it right here, again, in a beautiful hardcover, just how I like it. And look at this beauty. Wait. Yeah. Brené Brown is a podcast host. Uh, she's a professor. She's an author. I saw her TED talk from, I think, 2016, talking about vulnerability. Uh, so if you're curious, just check it out. The description says... When we dare to lead, we don't pretend to have the right answers. We stay curious and ask the right questions. We don't avoid difficult conversations and situations. We lean into vulnerability when it's necessary to do good work. What can we do better? Empathy, connection, and courage to start. So uh, I think that's, again, self-explanatory as most of the books here. But um, remember how we mentioned the TED Talk vulnerability leadership? You know... Just just leaving that thought with you. Uh, I'm excited to see what Brene has to say about vulnerability and leadership coming together. I actually heard it on TikTok, so please don't judge me. But someone said, hey, you know, as a woman, 
I don't feel like reading books from male authors, especially about leadership and success, because they have had most likely a completely different experience and their perspective, their POV would be completely different, right? Yeah, I actually want to read more leadership books written by women than female authors in general, because that perspective would probably resonate with me better. I'm excited to see what Brene has to say about vulnerability, courage, compassion, and how to dare to lead. Next book under the leadership section, we have Emotional Agility. I have two out of three books from leadership. I have Emotional Agility right here. Emotional Agility is written in 2016 by Susan David, PhD, first of all, another female author, so I'm really excited. Susan David is a psychologist on the faculty of Harvard, co-founder and co-president of the Institute of Coaching. Uh, she's also like a CEO of a consulting company, um, and um, the company is called Evidence Based Psychology. And guess what? She also is a TED Talk speaker. Emotional agility is a revolutionary science based approach that allows us to navigate life's twists and turns with self acceptance, clear sightedness, and an open mind. Susan David developed this concept after studying emotions, happiness, and achievements for over 20 years. She found that no matter how intelligent or creative people are, or what type of personality they have, it is how they navigate their inner world, their thoughts, feelings, and self-talk that ultimately determines how successful they will become. In the recent days, I really think I'm being stressed out more than usual at work uh, for many, for many other reasons. And, you know, there are some elements of burnout, there are some elements of just like, you know, the life going crazy speed and everything. But I wanted to say that emotional agility is something that I personally thrive for. Uh, I do think that I'm a pretty agile person in general, but I do think that that's a skill that I really want to focus on developing this year. I think it's a muscle that we need to train. Thank you, Susan. I'll let you know how it goes and hopefully I'll, I'll survive and persevere whatever the life throws at me. Finally, third book on the list under leadership would be Stolen Focus, Why You Can Pay Attention and How to Think Deeply Again. Now, this book is a bit different, written in 2022, uh, which is honestly quite recent by John Hurry. I think his most popular book, at least in New York Times bestselling list, was uh, Chasing the Scream, The First and the Last Days of the War on Drugs. It resonates with me on a personal level. Because it talks about the uh, short attention span and the crisis of our generation and the world in general. In the US, teenagers can focus on one task for only 65 seconds at a time. And office workers average only three minutes. Like so many of us, Harry was finding that constantly switching from device to device and tap to tap was a diminishing and depressing way to live. He tried all sorts of self-help solutions, even abandoning his phone for three months but nothing seemed to work. So Harry went on an epic journey around the world to interview the leading experts on human attention. And he discovered that everything we think we know about the crisis is wrong. Well, it's funny, funny how the author who talked about the, you know, the war on drugs and addictions is also talking about the attention span, but I'm really craving the correlation between the two and comparison between addiction to drugs and addiction to screen time. I do think that there is some foreshadowing on that. I know many friends of mine who really struggle with screen time and for example, they would be installing those apps that basically, you know, lock your screen for the X amount of hours or minutes for you to study or focus on something else. I can relate to watching like struggling to watch longer videos or reading for a long time because I'm being distracted by other things. And whenever I watch like a long YouTube video, I usually like don't watch it altogether. I usually pause it at some point and then like watch something else and then I come back to the longer video because it's insane. Again, my background coming from social media paid social media and digital marketing and you're gonna actually see like how those ads on tiktok or snapchat or instagram or, like whatever the viewership time is decreasing and again the younger you are the probably the the, the shorter the span is but also most people will determine if they watch the ad or not within like first one two or maybe three seconds depending on the length usually two seconds is when you know even think about how you consume TikTok. You just keep scrolling every like two seconds or so. Even if you're kind of interested in the content, you might just like 
not being bothered enough to continue watching you'll be just doing something else or you would not finish watching the video because you know you're just too impatient uh, I, i'm really curious to see what strategies would he propose uh to solve that and how i personally can recover my attention span category number four second last category is analytics measure what matters by john door john door is actually a venture capitalist first and foremost, but he is also a person who invented the OKR system. OKR system is objectives and key results adopted by many tech companies and like tech giants, you know, say Intel, Google, Amazon, help many of those organizations to thrive and grow. The revolutionary movement behind the explosive growth of Intel, Google, Amazon, and Uber with a foreword of Larry Page and contributions from Bono and Bill Gates, Measure What Matters is about using objectives and key results to make tough choices in business. Here's an anecdote for you. In 1999, John invested nearly $12 million in a startup that had great technology, ambition, but they had no clue how to develop and have any business plan for their product and their technology. So he has helped them, you know, with introducing the OKR system and just mentored them through the way. The startup grew from 40 employees to 70,000 employees. 70,000 employees, I want to highlight that. With a market cap exceeding 600 billion. 600 billion! <laughs> Give me the name. What do you think it was? Oh, wait. The startup was Google. Since then, Door introduced OKR to like over 50 companies. So, you know, OKR is focusing on effort, foster coordination, and enhancing workplace satisfaction. As everyone's goals from entry level to CEO are transparent to the entire institution. As I was doing research for this video, another fun fact, I, I decided to check him out on TED Talk. And I expected him to talk about Google or something else, or like, you know, the OKR specifically, which, you know, you can argue that he kind of touched upon. But uh, he actually has uh, like three, I want to say three, four videos over there. And they're focusing on uh, green energy and environmental studies. That's really rewarding. Like good for him. Good for him. And good for us. There is a thin line. <laughs> Last one is digital media. The four. The hidden DNA of Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. As recommended to me by our director of Biddable Media. Uh, he's also background coming from search. Honestly, I was not even surprised. When he gave me this name and I was like, yep, I saw that. I saw that coming. Written by Scott Galloway in 2017. Uh, he's a clinical professor of marketing at the New York University and Stern School of Business. And he's also a public speaker. He's a TED Talk speaker and he's an entrepreneur. I think now he lives in London somehow. But either way, again, good for him. He was named one of the world's 50 best business school professors. How did the four infiltrate our lives so completely that they're almost impossible to avoid or boycott? Can anyone challenge them? Even if you're not from the industry, I'm pretty sure you know how much those companies own, so, you know, the amount of data that they have. Monopolizing business, that's interesting to reflect on how our lives are being affected and how much we depend on them. I think now the society as a whole started to put one of the priorities to kind of like limit those companies. So I think it's quite recent, well, for the moment of recording this video. I think in European Union, you'll be able to or unlink your Facebook and your Instagram account. You'll be able to use like just Messenger, but not Facebook and Instagram or just Instagram and not the other two, right? Uh, by the way, WhatsApp, if you didn't know, WhatsApp is actually, it's not really used in North America that much, but I know in some other countries it is. So WhatsApp is actually also under Meta and Facebook. So just FYI, that would be one example. In 2023, there was a court case on TikTok and how, you know, there are many, many restrictions on uh, how TikTok is working with teens and how they permit uh, screen time for teenagers. How easy it is for us, or not easy, spoiler, I don't think that's easy, would be to avoid them, even if we really want to, and how it affects our life, and if it's like even fair. If you're from that industry, digital marketing technology, I have a feeling there's like, you know, few few things that you would want to know. Here we go. Let me know what you think in the comment section, like, subscribe, and honestly, let me know if you read any of those or if you have any other uh, books, maybe not that hyped at the moment, like maybe some of the older ones that really impacted your career or your personal POV in life in general. So 
Um, stay tuned. Bye.